Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! God's name did that poor bloke do to deserve all this? Miss Tangella had placed a pair of her shoes in the furnace to be destroyed. The handyman found them and has hidden them so they would not be incinerated. My goodness, sometimes I believe that man lives life simply to torment that poor girl. As do I. However, he claims to be holding them because they contain evidence of one of her crimes. Ah, it would appear that poor Andrew is not yet familiar with the old adage Snitches get stitches. Oh, well, hello and welcome to Creature Features. I am your host, Vincent. With me is my daring and dynamic doer of domestic duties, my steam butler, Mr. Livingston. And stood behind us, wielding the tools of torment, would be my typically sweet and dainty housemate, Tangella. And the victim under her wrath, who simply could not keep his big yap in the off position, would be the household handyman, Andrew. And do we have a fantabulous show tonight prepared intentionally and specifically just for you. First up, our featured film, much like our beleaguered handyman, is entitled The Victim from 1972. It stars Elizabeth Montgomery, Eileen Heckert, and George Maharis. The story revolves around a wealthy woman who attempts to find a missing sister, only to find herself stranded in a home with neither phone nor electricity as a madman runs rampant in the residence. Which often happens here in the Bolton Mansion, does it not? Guest-wise, we have a fantastic guest whose name escapes me and has not yet been placed on my teleprompter. The guest cancelled after viewing a previous episode where your dainty housemaid Super glued John Provost's fingers to his face. Ah, oh, we really should keep previous episodes under wraps until after the guest has made their appearance. No matter. So don't go away, because it shall be another fanciful flight of a dark and stormy night, right here on Creature Features! Stay tuned. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. It's a Saturday night. Saturday night. Come on, sing a Saturday night song with me, Livingston. I don't know any. You know, I, I, he's, he used to be such a jolly bloke, and now he uh, doesn't do anything. Really? Uh, don't you agree with me? I'm cross with you. You decommissioned our handyman. Who in God's name is going to repair that, that loo on the third floor? She, she, she's good at breaking things, not fixing things. I will call a plumber. Uh, no, plumber. Tracy, call Tracy the plumber. I will call Tracy. That's right. Tracy's, Tracy's good. Though. Okay, so welcome to the show. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun one. We, we don't have a guest. We've got this monstrosity over here. And this, uh, do you suppose he's going to wake up soon? If not, we'll have to call an ambulance. Who, who did the 911 on his head? 
Oh, so she injures and she repairs. That's incredible. Well, no, I did the repair. All right. That's what I thought. It looked too neat of a job to be her handiwork. In any case, uh, we are without a guest tonight, but that's all right, right? We've got a good film. We've got a good film. A very good film called The Victim from 1972. Stars Elizabeth Montgomery. You know who that was, right? Bewitched. Bewitched. She played Samantha. Samantha yeah. Stevens on Bewitched. Hmm. In any case, this is one of the many uh, made-for-television movies she did after leaving Bewitched because she did not want to do Bewitched anymore. And I can't really blame you her. You mean she quit? No, the show ran its course. Oh. I mean, the first Darren died, and then that second clone came in. It was never the same after that. Clone? No, it was like the new Darren. They didn't even say anything. It was just like a new Darren. He had a bigger forehead. It was easy to spot. Hmm. Yeah, that's strange. Anyways, uh, The Victim, uh, 1972, wonderful film. It also has uh, Eileen Heckert. And she was in uh, she was in that film, The Bad Seed. Really? Yeah. Good. That's a good film. Maybe we'll get that one one day. That's Dark rather movie. frightening. It is. No, it's it's disturbing. That one I found to be disturbing, not mm. so much frightening. In any case, uh, we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do the normal stuff we normally do. And... Uh, watch this train wreck of a guest of mine tonight and uh, hopefully later in the show we'll get uh, Andrew up in the chair as well so stick around uh, we'll be back after the next break but first let's start the victim
ridiculous. Thanks, George. Kate, how are you? Wondering about you? How are things, Susie? Things, Kate, are in a shambles. It's finished. Kaput. Oh? W when did you decide that? Last night. Oh, Katie, you know how hard I've tried? How much I wanted to make it work. But there's nothing left. Nothing. And Ben agrees? No. But when something's dead, the only decent thing to do is bury it. I uh, called my attorney earlier today and made an appointment for tomorrow. I'm going to start proceedings immediately. My, you are in a rush. But why wait? Well, yeah, I suppose. If you're that sure. I am. I was uh, half expecting a call from you. Big sister's intuition. Well, I hardly needed a crystal ball, did I? Hey, look, Susie, why don't you come up here? We can talk or not, whatever you want. Oh, Katie, I'd love to, but it's too complicated. <laughs> There's the cat, the dog, the bird, a million things. Can't Ben take care of the animals for a few days? Ben's gone. He left this morning for L.A. on business. And I want to be out when he gets back. What about the house? It's his. And he can have everything in it. I want nothing from him. And he'll get no more from me. Clean, finished, as if there never was a marriage. That's what I'm going to tell the lawyer. Hey, look, Susie, why don't I drive down there and keep you company? No, I'm all right, really. It's been raining here, and they're predicting a big storm. I don't want you driving down in that. When did the little weather ever stop me? Look, it's not even three o'clock. And it's lonely around here with Philip away. I can be down there in plenty of time for us to have a drink and a nice cozy dinner together. No, I don't think so. I'll probably have myself a good cry tonight. No, 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 I'll be fine in the morning. I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Uh, okay, love. You, you will call if you change your mind. Yes, I will. And Katie... Thanks for being there. Bye-bye. Have you finished eating? What are you doing here? This brief moment of tranquility 
has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. You know, I think we, maybe we should begin deploying puppets on our program. Right. Look, this would make a nice mask. No, I'll give it back shortly. I know it's yours. No, Sven Gulli has puppets. Really? No, I think we would gain more viewers, and maybe more of his viewers, if we did puppets as well. I've never I'll give watched it, a moment. It, so I don't know. No, you should watch. He's, he's, no, it's an, intrig it's an intriguing show. He stands in the coffin while he does it. What, you want to cut its uh, head off? Oh my! Oh my goodness! She's getting threatening. You're right, threatening. Here, take your bloody crow. Okay, so welcome back to the show. We hope you are enjoying the victim. Uh, the, do you see the shots of San Francisco? That's not green screen. They actually shot in the city of San Francisco. It is a beautiful city. Well, no, but back then it was even more beautiful hmm. because it had Elizabeth Montgomery in it. Whereas now, you know, Elizabeth Montgomery is dead. I just is she? It. No, I thought she was. You know, I watch, I watch Bewitched all the time, and I figured she was still alive. And now it turns out she's been gone some time. That's pity. It is pitiful. So, uh, anyways, uh, the story is progressing. We'll get back to that soon. But uh, is he uh, alive yet? No, he's still. You know, if he does not wake up, it's, the funeral could be costly. Especially the lawsuit. No, well, we won't talk about that. In any case, uh, what's new, Mr. Livingston? Every day is new. You know, this is the type of answer you get from a man like this. It's, it's, it's an on answer. It's every day is new. Oh, of course. Tell me something I don't know, sir. The sun is 198 million miles from Earth. You know, that's a long way to go for a tan. Right? For yeah. a tan. For a, quite a tan. Says the man with the tan. I do have a tan. Oh, look. I, I have a nice tan. Uh, in any case, uh, we're going to get back to the movie in a moment. Uh, you know, I, you playing with the sharp objects disturbs me a bit because, you know, the, the wine bottle on the poor bloke's head was one thing, but is she going to cause him more injury with let, this? Let us hope not. She's evil. Normally she does one injury per week. No, she's evil. All right, well, uh, I think that's it, right? Let's do some letters. Next. Next. After this next segment of the film? After the next segment of this film. All right. Off we go to The Victim, 1972. And when we come back, we are going to do some mail from you because you sent it to us and we have to do it, right? We have to. We have to. All right. Off we go. See you soon. I've been trying to reach area code 408-555-4208, and I keep getting a busy signal. Has there been any trouble with the telephone lines down there because of the storm? We haven't been notified of any. Oh, well, fine, then. Could you check the line for conversation, please? Is this an emergency call? Uh, yes, this is an emergency. I'll have it checked for you. I'm sorry, the phone's off the hook. Off the hook? There's no conversation on the line. Oh, oh yes, well, thank you, operator. George, I've decided to drive down and spend the night with Susan. Could you get the car out for me? Yes, ma'am, right away. Thanks. I'll just focus things in the suitcase. Oh, 
throw those in the front seat. What do you think? Trip, Mrs. <laughs> Hold down the fort, George. I'll do my best. Oh, hi, George. It's me. Has Susan called? No, ma'am. Is there something wrong? Well, uh, I'm at Highland Point. I called her again, but there was no answer. I thought maybe she'd changed her mind about coming up to the city. Perhaps she's on her way, Mrs. Wainwright. Well, I doubt that she'd come without calling. Look, uh, I'm going to go on down to Susan's. If, if she does arrive, have her call me, will you? Of course, Mrs. Wainwright. Okay. Bye-bye.
Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Mail time, mail time, we've got mail, so we're going to read mail just for you. I don't know, it sounded like a punk rock version of the mail song. Wonderful singing. It is, it's wonderful. Welcome back, uh, we're going to get back to the victim in a moment, but we're going to do some mail because you brought out mail, right? Deborah Wells from South St. Paul, Minnesota. Deborah Wells. She sounds like a movie star. She does. Deborah Wells. In St. Paul, Minnesota, that's a lovely place. Have you been there? No, I heard it's a lovely place though. Oh. So. oh, she wrote in very nice, neat cursive. You know, I can still read this. She can't read cursive, you know that? You know, if you and I want to send messages to one another that she could not read, we would not have to use code. All we'd have to use is cursive. Hmm. No, they never taught anybody her age to read cursive. All right, uh, she goes, uh, Dear Livingston Vincent Angela, I was so surprised to find your photograph in the mail today. I plan to frame the letter and photo to hang on my wall. Being a senior of poor health, there are few things left to get joy from. You really brighten up my day. Well, that's a, what a kind thing to say. No, no, I think, nice. no, I think they should broadcast our program in hospitals. No, think, think about it, because it would make people like Debbie happy, right? And then also it could be like a training program for all the injuries caused to Andrew by this one, right? Teach yeah. them to two, hurt two, people. Yes, right. No, something, no, 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 how to cure them after they've been hurt or mm. the types of injuries a man can sustain before he dies. Is he, we, he's not dead yet, is he? We should think this through, I think. I hope he's not dead. You know, if you kill him, you're going to be in big trouble with me. There's going to be no more, no more allowance for you for a while, I'll tell you that much. All right, let's see what else she says. Uh, love your show since there is not much on TV these days I find appealing. Always curious. I've wondered if the home is just for filming or does someone live in it? Well, yeah, we all live in it. So he likes to take off on Friday nights because he's got, you know, he's, he's got a social life. I don't have a social life. She doesn't have a social life. And Andrew, he's always down in the furnace room doing things. Handy things, right? Handy things. Fixing things. So uh, much love, Debbie. Well, thank you so much, Debbie. And uh, we hope you enjoy that photo we sent. And she must be a patron, right? That's probably how she got the photo. She must be. You now, if you want to be a patron, just go to what is our, whatever our Patreon is. It's, it's appearing under my leg. And then uh, you can get set up like Deb as well. Coming up. All right. Next, Mr. Livingston. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This is from Jack, Anne, and Sir Basil of Catbone. Sir Basil of Catbone. Let's find out. Oh, there's a photo. Oh, look, there's a kitty cat. They got it. Sir, Sir Basil of Rathbone. Look, all right, we're going to put a big one up. So this is Jack, Anne, and Sir Basil. And look, he's even got one of our shirts. You know, we don't sell too many shirts. I don't know why people don't buy our outerwear. Perhaps we're not marketing. Would. All right, let's, let's read what these lovely people have to say about us. Uh, to Vincent, the rocker, roller, and vanguard host of late night horror shows. To Mr. Livingston, the classy and very best man of butlering. To Tangela, the naughty nymph of nighttime TV. Naughty is right tonight. Watching old spooky sci-fi movies began with my grandfather when I was a boy, and I have continued this terrifying tradition with my own family for the past 25 years. Every weekend, we settled in to watch your wonderful show. Thank you for taking care of this twilight television tradition and keeping America strong. Love, Jack, Anne, and Sir Basil of Capone, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. P.S. When we grow up, we want to be late-night horror hosts. Well, you know, if that is something you want to do, do it. Jack, but I think that once you've done it for a while, you'd rather hang out with Anne and Sir Basil of Rathbone because it's probably funner than sitting around with these two ninnies. I could be wrong. I don't know. Thanks for writing. Next up, Mr. Livingston. British Columbia, Canada. Oh, this is part two of last week's. Yes. 
This is the other sister, Shaylin Page, from Merritt, British Columbia. <laughs> She's, she likes them. Caution contains art, handle with care, fragile. And there's pictures on the back of this, hedgehog. Oh, she's a good artist. She's like a sister. It must run in the family. The Page family. family. No, and that makes sense because Page, they put their art to Page, right? Where do you come up with these things? No, it's written on the envelope. It says the last name's Page. Well, it's not like she's paging people, right? Very well. It's, it's, oh my goodness, it's a long letter. All right, this is, this is incredible. Let's see what we've got here. Anything else? I shall give this back to you. Let's start with the letter. Dear Creature Features, it's been quite a while since I've written to you all. I hope you like the drawings I made, my own watercolors for the goat girl. All right, you gotta show, look at this. This is incredible. Look, it's a goat, oh no, no, this is a goat girl. This is goat girl right here. This is a thing here. Goat girl, I assume. Put a big one up. Kind of looks like Tangella, does it not? Without so, the hair. Goat girl. Right, the hair's a little bit. That's all right. It's still a goat girl, right? Mm. She's got horns in the ears. All right, so that's that one. And uh, I made my own watercolors for the goat girl. Sorry if the ink is smudged. I've never done watercolor before. Well, you did a fine job. Now, with the goat octopus, or whatever cool name Tangella comes up with, I... No, Tangella loves octopi and goats. Look at this. She combined two, she's like a mad scientist. She combined the DNA of the two on an art page and created the goat octopus. An interesting mind. And it is wonderful. All right. Uh, Tangella will come up with a name for it, but I, she probably won't say it to any of us. So, uh, best of both worlds, the intelligence of a goat and octopus. They love to cuddle and can eat anything. Has it been two years since I've written to the show? I've been trying to write more letters, but I'm just too lazy. Now, you know, your skills lie in artwork, Shailen. I'll try my best to send more. Sincerely, Shailen Page. P.S. One day the pages will invade your mansion and we will welcome you and Mr. Livingston will make you tea. If you find it. He's, you know, he's not an optimist. He's, he's like a, a goat octopus. That's what he is. And uh, that he's was a, the last one. He's letter. a goat octopus. I know, she included this uh, small badge. It says Merit. Hmm. So it's a Merit badge is what this is. I think that's a location. No, I know it's the location, but it's still a Merit badge, like the Boy Scouts. This man has no sense of humor. It's not in his DNA. I think it's, you know, do you suppose it's a German thing? No, that's what they did. They took the humor out. He was once a humorous baby, and the German system... Worked it out of him. That's my theory. I could be wrong. In any case, uh, if you'd like to send us a letter of your own, send it to the email address over here. Or if you want to send us a merit badge of some form with a goat octopus artwork included, send it to the postal address you see right here. We'll be back uh, after the break. But first, let's get back to the victim.
night, Callie. You hungry? Oh, you couldn't possibly be. You've already been fed. <laughs> Susan? Hey, it's me! Mrs. Chapel is. We don't keep tabs on your sister. She's always gallivanting somewhere. She's not home? No. What time did she leave? Search me. She was gone from the house when I got here. That's all I know. What time was that? My regular time, three o'clock. But I, I talked to her on the phone just a few minutes before three. Well, I can't help that. I was here at my regular hour, just like always. But that's not possible. You would have seen her leaving on the way from your house, wouldn't you? Are you calling me a liar, Mrs. Wainwright? Well, uh, no, of course not, Mrs. Hawks. I, I was only trying to be logical. There's no way from here to the highway except past your house, and it must take at least five minutes to walk the road from your house to here. I know what time I got here. I can't say what time you spoke to your sister. So I don't know if I should have seen her going to the highway. Or not, do it. Mrs. Hawks, I, I tried to call here twice between three and four and the phone was off the hook. Then someone put it back on and when I called again, there was no answer. And you insist you were here all that time? Mrs. Wainwright, some people have work to do. I am trying to do mine. Now, I don't know nothing about no phone. I came in here at three o'clock and I went straight upstairs. Today is my upstairs day. Hmm. And you probably didn't hear the phone ringing because your hearing aid was turned off. Well, there wouldn't be nobody calling me here. What about girl? Have you seen her? Have you seen the dog, Mrs. Hawks? There's no need to shout. No, I didn't. Not hiding her hair. She probably took it with her when she left.
Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching The Victim with Elizabeth Montgomery. I think we know what's happened to the victim by now, eh? Dead. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, it's his sister, right? Yes, indeed. Well, you know, I, I think that would be a sad way to find your sister or to at least be looking for your sister and to know that she's like this is not a good way to go. Anyway, so we're going to get back to the movie in a moment, but... Uh, Tangela informed me during the break that she is sharpening this knife. For those of you who have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet. Or perhaps they're not ready. Well, how long is it going to take them? We've been on the air for seven bloody years. Well, perhaps some of them are new to us. Well, new to the show. And they have to take it time costs, to no, it costs nothing. They push a button and subscribe. And then all you have to do is push one button and Tangela will not murder you. With, with, you know, an executioner's axe. Oh, just the subscription. I thought you meant to become a patron, perhaps. Oh, no, well, patrons are a whole different thing. We'll talk about that later. So, no, just, so uh, YouTube, I know many of you are not watching on YouTube. You watch on your television, and that's fine. But uh, the people on YouTube have not been pushing subscribe. And it's been making her so angry. No. And you don't want to have her... Be angry. No, you would not like her when she's angry. And uh, no, it's easy to do. All you have to do is push the subscribe thing. And if you, even if you are not watching this on YouTube, we would be greatly appreciative if you would go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel anyways. Like and subscribe. No, subscribe and then maybe like. I don't care about the likes. You, you can dislike all you like. I, just subscribe. Because you know why? Somebody told me in Hollywood, that Hollywood will not even look at our show until we have at least 100,000 subscribers. Oh. They will not even consider us a valid program until we have 100,000 subscribers or more on YouTube. It's, it's bloody terrible. I, you know, they, they did not put this in the book on how to make it in Hollywood, which I read. Well, there are millions of people, so the potential for 100,000 is there. Exactly. And, you know, a million at least watch us every week. Right? Between all the various programs we've According done, all the episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So push that subscribe button, whether or not you're watching us on YouTube, because it'll make Tangela quite pleased, and uh, it'll make me happier, because then I could call executives, which I have. I've, I've spoken to every executive in Hollywood. You know what they tell me? You don't have 100,000 bloody subscribers. We're not going to talk to you. So what they said. It's too much. Anyways, enough of this, this pledge night stuff. Uh, let's get back to the victim, and uh, when we come back, uh, Tanchal is going to tell us something. I don't know what. We'll see. Bye. Ooh, it's freezing in here. No wonder. She isn't. Who's calling, please? This is Edith Jordan. Oh, Edith, hi. How are you? This is Catherine Wainwright. Catherine Wayne. Oh, Catherine, hi. When did you get down here? Oh, an hour or so ago. Oh, uh, well, will Susan be back soon? I imagine she will. She wasn't here when I arrived. And since she didn't know I was coming, I really can't be sure. She might have gone somewhere for dinner. Oh, I doubt that. Unless she's on her way here. Have you spoken to Susan since last night? Yes, late this afternoon. Then you know what she's decided. Uh-huh. Yes, we had quite a long chat this morning, too. I told her to come over and have dinner and, and sleep over. She said she'd let me know. Uh, th then I, I don't understand. 
Apparently, she's been gone for a couple of hours. Mrs. Hawks has been here since three, and... Mrs. Hawks? What's she doing there? Susan Pink slipped that old battle axe. She finally fired her. She told me so last night. They had words more than usual, I gather. Are you sure? Susan gave her two weeks' pay and a boot in her ear. If it had been me, she could go whistle for her two weeks. Well, then what's she doing here? Well, I always did think that that old witch was a little bit touched. You know how possessive she is about Ben in that house. She obviously won't take go for an answer until she's thrown out bodily. But I wouldn't advise you to try it. I'm sure her bite is poisonous. Well, if she does come to your house, will you uh, have her call me? Of course. I'll have her phone you right away. And if she comes home, let me know, will you? I'm kind of worried about her, the state of mind she's in. Y yes, I, I will, Edith. Bye-bye. Sit by the fire. Could have gone to see her lawyer, I suppose, about the divorce. How would you know about the divorce? It was just decided last night. It's been coming for a long time. Anybody with eyes could see that. Do you realize that Mr. Chapel is likely to lose this house if she goes through with the divorce now? That's hardly your affair. Oh, ain't it? This house has been my affair for the past ten years. Every day, from breakfast till the dinner dishes was washed and put away. This house and Mr. Chapel, mine, until she came along. That's enough, Mrs. Hawks. Uh, now, you needn't bother about dinner. And if you're finished with your other work, you can go. I'm sure that Mrs. Chapel will be home soon and we'll fix something for ourselves. Number one, I ain't finished with my other work. Number two, this is Wednesday. On Wednesday, Mr. Chapel always has my New England boiled dinner. Mr. Chapel won't be home for dinner. He's in Los Angeles. That's so. Nobody told me. You can take my word for it. And neither Mrs. Chapel nor I like boiled food. In this house, I take my orders from Mr. Chapel. Uh, Mrs. Hawks, you leave me no choice. I happen to know that Mrs. Chapel fired you, so if you'd be kind enough to leave. 
I've been working for Mr. Chapel for a long time. He hired me. He's the only one who can fire me. Did you hear what I said? I want you to go. Now. Her car's in the garage. Didn't she come in this way? Vincent, Tangella, and Livingston. This is Vincent, no relation, and Sophia from Oakland, California. We watch you all the time and would like to request that you show the movie Them from 1954. That is assuming no one in the Poulter Manor is afraid of giant ants. Peace and love.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. You know, Elizabeth Montgomery's hair is uh, wet in a, almost this entire film. It's a good look for her. I think I, maybe I should start doing my hair wet. The wet look. The show. It's a wet look. It is mm. exactly. Welcome back. Uh, we are watching The Victim, 1972. You probably know that already. If you're just joining us, it, you're pathetic. I mean, that's like as late as you could be, right? They're fairly late. No, you should go off and watch the farm report or something like that if you're just joining us. But if you're not joining us, uh, thank you for staying up late with us and watching this wonderful film. I like this film. Do you? No, they filmed in Carmel. Hmm. We've been to Carmel many times. In fact, her favorite hotel belongs to Doris Day. It's in Carmel, and they allow you to bring dogs. She brings Fang all the time to this hotel. Right there, it's, it's uh, Carmel by the sea. It's not Carmel by the volcano, mind you. It's Carmel by the sea. By the sea. Because the one by the volcano, uh, Doris State does not have a hotel at that one. No. No, it's a, it's a for sure thing, for sure. Uh, let me see this thing that you're cleaning. You know, I've always wondered about these. Is what, what is this weapon called? I think it's called a flail, is it not? I believe it's called a mace. A mace. It's either a mace or... Well, do you know what it's called? Are you going to tell us? No, so uh, a mace. Isn't the mace the one with just no chain? Oh, no, I think that's a mace, but I'm not sure. No, it could be a flail. All right, so if you know, put it in the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, put it in the comments. Let us know, is this a mace or a flail? Because uh, I think it's a flail. Because these cars... Did, you don't use these on hand, Drew, do you? Oh my goodness! What, oh what heavens, have, no! What have we raised here? She no, she was supposed to become nicer, being with me. Yeah, I'm a nice person. I, I never cause injury to anyone. Well, she hasn't murdered you, anyone, so that we well, know. You know, of. I think you know. I think it's it's her access to finances which allows her to buy things like this. Uh, she did not move in with this in her suitcase. I believe you supply the finances. Oh, I know, and that's maybe, maybe we need to curb that we a bit. We need to rethink the bookkeeping. No, it's not a question of bookkeeping. It's where she spends it. Pfft. Ridiculous. All right, let's get back to the film. Yes? Yes. Yes. Off we go back to the victim. And uh, when we come back, uh, we'll see if we can wake up Andrew, right? He's, I think he snoozed long enough, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll get her on it. All right, see you on the other side of the break. secretary there. I don't know her name. Well, Joyce is gone for the day. Oh. Uh, well, perhaps you could tell me, where does Mr. Chappell stay when he goes to Los Angeles for the company? Well, he always stayed at the White Hall. The, the White Hall. Thank you. But, ma'am. Yes? Mr. Chappell hasn't been with Sloan and Simpson for some time. What? Uh, are you sure? Oh, yes. He left the firm over a month ago. I see. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much. Funny. Susan never mentioned that. Oh. Oh, well, Callie, all right, if you're still hungry.
Mrs. Hawks? Mrs. Hawks? Is that you? I don't need. Good night. Lie down by the fire and get dry. Benjamin Chapel registered there? Just a moment, please. No, we don't. Well, do you have a reservation for him? And he hasn't canceled his reservation? No. Well, then I'd like to leave a message for him, please. Uh, would you have him call home as soon as he arrives? Yes, that's right. Thank you.
she hasn't. Gee, that is strange. Well, her, her car's in the garage. I, I thought she'd come home when I saw it. But I guess a friend picked her up and the car's been here all the time. Could be, but... Catherine, I think you should call the police and report her as missing. The police? Really? You really think I should? Well, uh, maybe, maybe I will. Good. Well, Catherine, I, I hate to think of you there all alone. I was going to suggest that Harry pick you up so you could join us for dinner, but I just heard on the radio that Route 1 is closed by rock slide between there and here. Well, that, that's very thoughtful of you, Edith, but I'm okay. I'm probably being foolish. I've been jumping at sounds and I'm imagining all sorts of things. I hate to be alone in that house on a night like this. Especially with all your worry about Susan. Oh, I'd, I'd really be spooked. Well, I, I definitely think you should call the police. Hello? Hello? Edith? Hello? Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Edith Jordan called headquarters and asked us to look in on you. Make sure you're all right. Oh, yes, I'm fine. C come in, please. Thank you. Your phone's still out of order? Yes, I'm afraid so. I just tried it again. Well, we've reported it, but there are so many lines down from the storm, I'm afraid it'll be quite a while before the phone company gets around to you. Mrs. Jordan wanted you to know that she's calling around trying to locate your sister and tell her you're here. Oh, thank you. I, I've been quite concerned. Uh, emergency vehicles can get through on Route 1 to the north. So if you'd like this to take you by Mrs. Jordan's home, she thought you might want to spend the night with her. Well, that's very kind of you, but uh, Mrs. Chapel might be coming in any time now, and I I'd rather be here. Well, you could leave her a note. No, no, I'll stay here. But w would it be possible, if Mrs. Chapel is stranded somewhere, for you to uh, let me know? Yes, ma'am. 
We'll keep in touch with Mrs. Jordan. If she hears anything, we'll get back to you. Thank you. Now, is there anything else we can do for you? Oh, yes. Uh, part of a tree broke through the window upstairs. Uh, it's too heavy for me to move. The room's getting soaked. Well, I think we can fix that, but uh, we'll need something to block it off with. Oh, I think we can find something in the basement. Must be something down here you can use. Wait a minute. I think this will work. How big is that window, ma'am? Think that'll cover it? Oh, yes, that should be fine. Yeah, take okay. that Listen, we'll need something to hold this in place. We'll take a couple of these two bottles. at the slide about two miles north on Route 1. So if you change your mind or you need any help... Yes, all right, and thank you again. Oh, girl, for heaven's sake. Thank you. 
Is someone there? Who is it? This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. It was a dark and stormy night in the victim. I, you know, I like when they do the whole thunder and lightning, home alone, no electricity thing. That's what makes a film spooky, right? It does. It does. But it's like when the power goes out here. And other than her, her banter that's going on, you know, she, she knows how to fix things electronically. And sometimes she does not intentionally do it on purpose. No, she will not go down and change the fuse. And I have no technical skill whatsoever, so I, I cannot do it. You just unscrew it and screw the new one in. Right, but if you're not here, like on a Friday night, Hold that again. and she won't she won't do it, and he's gone, and even if it happened tonight, he's, he's out to lunch. Why don't you see if you could gently wake him up? Because you know, she's not very chatty tonight for some reason. No. Typically, she, she, she won't shut up, right? She's not quiet. So, uh, on this movie, did you know that Elizabeth Montgomery did um, the other one? Uh, she was uh, Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden. We showed that one. What in God's name? Oh, my goodness. That's her idea of gentle. Well, he's out of the window. Oh, my goodness. That poor man. All right. Well, you know, I, I think we need to give him a bonus this month. For all he's gone through. You mean a bribe? No, a bonus. A bonus. They don't call them bribes in, in the United States of America. They call them bonuses. Ah. Bonus. All right. So what else is new with you, Mr. Livingston? Any new soup pans? No, but, but the uh, new mandolin works very well. Oh. No. Yeah. He's discovered this, this store in Corte Madera called Sur la Table. Sur la Table. And they have all the fancy French equipment for cooking and he doesn't even cook he's not the assigned cook we've got maurice cooking but he likes to like he uses it for his own breakfast what did you make for breakfast yesterday let's see i made a salmon eggs benedict all right that's a normal thing typically he's he's creating things out of snails and things snails I no know. i you know i like escargot but I, you know not for breakfast it's just not a breakfast food to me it's not a breakfast food to me either Lunch, perhaps. No, I've seen him put escargot in eggs. What do you call it? Snail entrails? Snail entrails? It would be a good name. Yeah. All right. I think we should get back to this film. How about you? I think so as well. All right, off we go to the victim. Is this the last one? Is this the last segment? Last Tom? segment. Last segment. And uh, do not leave after the credits because uh, we're going to have uh, Tangela back and... Uh, Maybe Andrew. Who knows? We'll see. All right. See you on the other side of the credits. You know that dark and stormy night is a redundancy. Of course it is.
himself. Listen, I saw the police going out past my house, and I was wondering, well, is something wrong here? What do they want? You know, they, they just brought me a message from Mrs. Jordan. What happened to your lights? I don't know. The storm, I suppose. Oh, that ain't likely. We're on the same line, and my lights is okay. Maybe it's a fuse. I better take a look. the candles. There's a flashlight here somewhere. Here it is. And here's the fuses. I, I thought it might be a fuse, but I don't know where the fuse box is. What's in the basement? You better come with me. Why? Well, my eyes ain't so good. Sometimes it's hard to know which ones is blown. You gotta understand about Mr. Chapel. He's pretty much in debt and a divorce right now. It could finish him. Mrs. Hawks, I really don't care to discuss Mr. Chapel's problem with you. He'd lose this house everything. I understand how you feel about Mr. Chapel, but this is between Mr. Chapel and Mrs. Chapel. You think he married her for her money, don't oh, you? Mrs. Hawks, please. The ha handles. It's on off. You. All the time. What? I knew there was someone in this house. You never went home, did you? What are you talking about? You turned off the lights to frighten me. Why? Do you really hate my sister that much? You're talking crazy. Down here in the basement, making noises to frighten me. You're trying to drive me out of this house. Now, what would I go skulking around here for? I don't know. But I heard you. I heard you. Did you tell that to the police? Yes, I did. You're lying. I <laughs> didn't do any searching. I was outside watching. You told them they didn't believe you. It was you all the time. Get out of this house. Get out. Get out! I certainly didn't expect to see you here, but I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, should I? Under the circumstances, obviously, Susan told you. Susan isn't here. She's not? Well, where is she? I don't know. Ben, I'm worried. I've been here for hours. I I've even been outside looking for her. 
Or maybe she drove up to see you. Her car's in the garage. Well, that's odd. Well, probably a friend came to pick her up. She may have felt the need to talk. I suppose you know about us. Yes, she told me on the phone. That's why I decided to come down. But when I got here, she wasn't here. She told me you were going to Los Angeles on business. Well, I was on my way. After our blow-up last night, I thought it would be a good idea if we both had some time to cool off. But on my way to the airport, I started to have second thoughts. I was halfway up the steps of the plane when I just turned around and came back down again. I sat in the airport and I thought over all the things that we had said to each other and... The more I thought about it, the worse. Well, anyway, that plane took off without me, and then the next one, and finally I decided that I would come on back and try my damnedest to find some way to patch things up. Certainly more important than any business trip. I'll find her. The phone's out of order. Dead all right. Well, I'm going to go up and change out of these wet things. Maybe the phone will be fixed by then. Ben, did you know that Susan fired Mrs. Hawks? Yes. It was pretty rough on the old girl. I mean, after being here all these years, but I don't blame Susan. Mrs. Hawks looked on her as a usurper ever since we got married. Well, she was here today, cleaning and cooking as usual. She was? Not only that, she's been trying to frighten me into leaving. Now, Catherine, I find that hard to believe. But it's true. She's had me climbing the walls. I, I think she resents me even more than she does Susan. You really think so? Well, the fact is, I'm not too sure that Mrs. Hawks is quite all there. Ben, you don't suppose Mrs. Hawks could have done something to Susan, do you? What? Well, I suppose it is possible. No. I mean, what am I saying? The idea is ridiculous. Catherine, nobody has done anything to Susan. You, you're so jumpy. It's beginning to affect me. Ben. How did you get here? What? What do you mean? The highway. It's closed. Oh, yeah. Of course. Well, I had to take the back road. The one that cuts in just north of Wilton Corners. It's mostly a dirt road. Well, mud now. And uh, it's washed out a couple of miles from me. I had to walk from there. Well, that's why I'm such a mess. Catherine, relax. We're worrying about nothing. Susan's spending the night with a friend. I'm sure of it. You'll see. What, what, what about the people you were supposed to meet in Los Angeles? Your business appointment. Won't they be wondering where you are? I called my office from the airport and told my secretary to phone down and cancel. Your secretary at Sloan and Simpson? Well, of course. What else? What's with you, Kate? Uh, n nothing. I, 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 I just wondered. You really are shook up. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today.
Well, I feel a lot better. Have you tried the phone again? No. Still nothing. Ben, does Susan know about your job? Know what? I called Sloan and Simpson earlier today to find out where I could reach you in Los Angeles. I see. And what you found out is that I'd been sacked. No, Susan doesn't know. Oh, I see. That's what all those questions were all about. Were you really going to Los Angeles? Yes. To see my contacts, ex-customers and all that. I've been beating the bushes these last month trying to locate a new situation. Hopefully before I had to tell Susan I'd blown the old one. I guess you've been under a lot of pressure lately. Pressure? You mean money? Yes. Is, uh, is that part of the trouble between you and Susan? Not directly. Would you like a drink, Catherine? No, thank you. Well, I think I'm going to have another one. I still haven't gotten a chill out of my bones. What do you mean, not directly? Oh. It bugs me. I mean, not being able to give Susan the things I'd like to. I've got my share of male ego, and it bothers me whenever she uses her own money to buy clothing and things. No reason why she shouldn't. I suppose not, but uh, it triggered more than one argument for which I take full responsibility. But you know, I've always wanted to make a go of it on what I earn. I would have thought that the extra 15000 that Susan drew from her trust fund last month would have eased things for you a bit. So she told you about that? No, my attorney did. I see. Well, some of my creditors were getting a bit nasty. Speaking of lawyers, did you know that Susan's planning to see her lawyer tomorrow about the divorce? Well, I suppose I'm not all that surprised. A divorce now would put you in a bind, wouldn't it? I guess. I haven't thought that much about it because it's not going to happen. The truth is, our difficulties are just a bunch of molehills. Piled one on top of another until they look like an insurmountable mountain. But we'll work it out. You'll see. Those molehills. Money and other women. Look, Catherine. I know that Susan was just a little suspicious about some of my business trips. But I gave up those one-night stands long before we were married. Ben? I found Susan's keys and her wallet upstairs. I can't imagine why she would have gone out without them. Well, she has another set of keys. And why would she need her wallet if she's having dinner at a friend's house? Y yes, I, I suppose. But I, I can't get it out of my head that maybe this afternoon she went outside for something and, and uh, in the storm had an accident. Uh, she could be lying out there somewhere. Your imagination's working overtime. Okay. It'll make you feel better. I'll go out and look. Thanks, Ben. Looks like the rain's let up.
What are you doing? What's got into you, Catherine? Where do you think you're going? Suddenly, I just couldn't sit there any longer. Ben, I'm frightened. Of what? Something terrible has happened to Susan. I know it. I'm sure of it, Ben. If I could just get to the police and tell them. Catherine, you're not making any sense. I mean, we're stuck here until morning. There's no place to go. No! They're, they're police at the roadblock. If we could just tell them... To... Catherine, you're letting your imagination run wild. Come on. We'll go inside, sit down quietly, and I'll give you a nice, stiff drink. I'll be all right in a minute. In a minute. If you drink that all down. Come on. Ben, I'm sorry. It's just that it's been such a nerve-wracking day. I'm all right now. You sure? Yes, but I'm exhausted. Of course. If you don't mind, I think I'll... Uh... Go up and lie down. I feel as if I could sleep for a week. Good idea. Oh, I, I can make it. Will you get some sleep? I'll wake you when Susan gets home. Catherine, the phone company's probably repairing the lines right now. I'm sure we'll have service any minute now. Y yes, uh, I'm sure.
And that brings the station wagon up on the stump that squishes the man who maybe killed his wife. You know, I'm, I'm a bit confused. It's not entirely clear that that man was the one who killed his wife, her sister. Or if you were paying attention, he had the clippers, remember? For cutting the, the phone lines and he put them in the oh. drawer. Oh, all right. So that's, that's the only true evidence they give us, that he was the one. The only thing I saw that made sense. Mm, all right. All right. Well, he did chase after her, I suppose. So, maybe. Mm -hmm. Who knows? All right, anyways, good film. Um, we might show it again in two years. Maybe. Maybe not. Who two knows? Two and a half. We've got more Elizabeth Montgomery films coming, I'm told. Do we? Yes. There's apparently another one. I, I can't recall what it is, but it's apparently on the way. So, uh, this one was good, though. Hopefully, the next one will be as good as this one. Mm. Andrew, how are you, sir? Hmm? Huh? How do you feel? With my fingers. No, but how, how do you feel? How is your health? He's not quite all here yet. No, he's coming back. I, I, think, I think we need to make him some coffee or some type of tea. caffeine drink. No, he needs no, he, tea. He, he, he likes that. A he good likes herbal that. tea. So, so uh, how many fingers am I holding in front of you? Five. Right. He'll be, he'll be all right soon. No, he'll, he'll be okay. He's... You know, he's gone through this before. He's all right. So uh, what did you think of the movie? What little you saw of it, Andrew? You do the realize film. that's your name. Tonight's oh. film. Lovely. See? He liked it. I liked it. I think our viewers liked it. So it was a good night. Right? Good night, indeed. It was a very good night. So uh, what do we got going on next? Anything exciting? Another movie next week. Another movie next week. It's going to be... Uh, what's, the, what's the movie next week? It's... Uh, Who's in the next one? Actors. Like, actors, of course, it's actors. No, it's going to be. That's but very it's gonna be some, some good actors. But you know, guest-wise, we've got uh, an interesting guest coming. She's got some creepy babies. This one's going to love the creepy babies, right? Indeed. Right. All right. Well, that's it for uh, tonight, right? Nothing else. Uh, that's it for this evening. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for watching our program tonight. Sorry, we did not have a guest, but we will have one next week, and. Uh, Andrew works out pretty well sometimes, right? When he's not been slammed over the head with a wine bottle. But uh, we'll, we'll try to avoid doing that next week. So uh, you have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Don't forget that uh, I love you, Tangela loves you, and uh, Livingston merely tolerates you, but that's a good thing in his world. So we'll see you next week, and have a great night. So, uh, Andrew, you know, um, Tangela the girl over here in the window uh, you don't have any pending issues with her anymore do you she seems like a lovely girl <laughs>